Okay, I want to talk for a few minutes about how the, the red and silver knobs are used uh, during the setup, like the first time on a dado set or uh, you know whenever you're changing widths on a router table for instance. Uh, the setup is actually not as long as a lot of people think. The owner's manual and the video cover that really well, but there's a lot of other stuff mingled in with it. Uh, before we get started, of course, make sure the saw is unplugged. Uh, stock ledge loose on the end closest to the knobs, and uh, make sure the black knob on the top is loose. The uh, two things I want to cover before the setup that trip people up occasionally. First, anytime that you're turning, this red knob, you want to make sure that you let the silver knob ride right along with it. Uh, you don't want to turn the red knob and try to hold on to the silver knob. That will give you all kinds of crazy results. The other thing is the home position, the slot in the knob, the black set screw. This has nothing to do with the fit of the joints. Uh, its only purpose is to keep you from running out of travel on the mechanism as you're turning the knob. Uh, the actual setup for each joint is only four steps and you're going to alternate between the knobs as you go through them. First step, the red knob, go counterclockwise to bring the pin plates together and they'll also start moving closer to the blade. You want to keep going until you actually feel them solidly make contact here at the knob. Uh, not crank tight like a screwdriver, but until you feel a little bit of resistance change. Second step, switch to the silver knob. This is the actual KISS calibration, where you just uh, use a silver knob to very gently kiss the inner pin plate off the edge of the cutter. Uh, you don't want to let the pin plates press against the cutter. The third step, go back to the red knob. This time you go clockwise. Uh, that will spread the pin plates apart and also start creating some distance between the cutter and the inner, inner pin plate. Uh, the owner's manual for the test cut, they say at least an eighth of an inch in that space. Uh, this step, again, has nothing to do with the fit of the joints you're going to get. Uh, it is only to create clearance. So when you start the saw, uh, the blade's not going to be running into that inner pin plate. At this point, you've got a little bit of clearance there. You're ready for the test cut, so you'd... Uh, Tighten down the stock ledge, put on the front blade guard, make the test cut, which I've already done. Uh, we've got three of the four steps done, and then the last one, go back to the red knob, going clockwise on the red knob. That will keep moving the pin plates away from the blade, and uh, also spread them apart to fill up the cut that you just made. And you want to go until you feel just a little bit of resistance when you drop the cut down over there. And uh, when you have the fit you want, you want to be consistent each time Consistent each time that you set this up for the amount of resistance that it takes. Uh, that'll save you some micro adjusting down the road. At this point, you're done. If you don't, from here on out, ever want to turn that red knob until you're ready to set up for a different cutter width. If you're going to do any fine tuning at all, it's done only with this silver knob. And what that silver knob does is make a wider or narrower pin uh, by adjusting this distance right here. Uh, tighten the locking knob on the, pipe, uh, on the top, button down the stock ledge, put the blade guard back on, and you're ready to go. Uh, that is all there is to the basic setup. Of course, uh, get a hold of me if I can answer any questions on that and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks.